Good day everyone and welcome to part 4 of this series on science, technology, and society. In the previous video, we have discussed about the two perspectives of technology, viewing it as an instrument to achieve specific goals, or viewing it for its being, which reveals human activity at a given time period. While the first view promotes a clear expectation out of technology, the second promotes an unclear view as to what technology will unconceal of man's nature moving forward. We also emphasize that while these two views offer us an explanation as to how technology makes us understand our world, we also are warned on not focusing solely on these two perspectives as this may lead us to unfavorable outcomes, making science and technology work against us rather than for us. In this next lesson, we endeavor to go back a little and answer the following questions. What does it really mean to live a good life? What qualifies as a good existence? Let's find out. To start our discussion of the good life, let's take a look at this painting, The School of Athens. The School of Athens is a masterpiece that visually represents an intellectual concept. In one painting, Rafael Sancho used groupings of figures to lay out a complex lesson on the history of philosophy and the different beliefs that were developed by the great Greek philosophers. Who are the figures in this painting? On the left, we see Socrates, okay, this man on green. Heraclitus, okay, and Pythagoras. On the right, we see Euclid, okay, holding a compass with his young student, okay, Ptolemy, holding the terrestrial globe, okay, which we, as we can remember, his claim is on a geocentric universe. And we see the painter himself, Rafael Zancho, okay. Now, the two main figures in the work are placed directly under the archway. Here we see two men who effectively represent the different schools of philosophy, Plato and Aristotle. An elderly Plato stands at the left, pointing his finger to the sky. Beside him is his student Aristotle. Aristotle reaches his right arm directly out toward the viewer, palms down, each man holds a copy of their books in their left hand. Okay, Timaeus for Plato and Nicomachean Ethics for Aristotle. Now Plato's gesture toward the sky is thought to indicate his theory of forms. His philosophy argues that there are two worlds, okay, the one that we are living in right now and an ideal world. The first world, the physical world, we see and interact with daily is constantly changing and as a result not perfect on the other hand the ideal world is a spiritual realm of ideas filled with abstract concepts in a sense a perfect world conversely aristotle's hand is a visual representation of his belief that knowledge comes from experience if you can still remember empiricism as it is known, theorizes that humans must have concrete evidence to support their ideas or claims and is very much grounded in the physical world. Scholars argue that this divide in philosophies placed at the center of the school of Athens is the core theme of the painting. The idealism of Plato and the realism of Aristotle. Now, why did we start discussing about the good life and the contradiction between the worldviews of the teacher and his student? Well, it is very interesting to note that the first philosopher who approached the problem of reality from a scientific lens is also the first thinker who worked his way through the complex problematization of the end goal of life. To put simply, Aristotle supports empiricism and also coined the term eudaimonia, 
the pinnacle of happiness. He asserts that in this physical world that we are living in, change is a process that is inherent in things, that entities of the world start as potentialities and move toward actualities. An example of this is a seed that eventually germinates and becomes a plant. From potentiality, the seed, to the actuality, the plant. Aristotle then extends this potentiality to actuality transformation to human beings, stating that every action that emanates from a human person is determined by the purpose which that person has. Each person aspires for a goal. This goal, as discussed in the second episode, is human flourishing, or simply, happiness. Now, let's first answer the question, who? On whose good should we aim to maximize? Kanino? In answering this question, the concept of utilitarianism may point us in a particular direction. Utilitarianism is a philosophical view about how we should evaluate a wide range of things that involve choices that people face. Among the things that can be evaluated are actions, laws, policies, character traits, and moral codes. Utilitarianism is a form of consequentialism, consequence, because it rests on the idea that it is the consequences or results of actions, laws, and policies that determine whether they are good or bad, right or wrong. In general, whatever is being evaluated, we ought to choose the one that will produce the best overall results. In the language of utilitarians, we should choose the option that maximizes utility, that action or policy that produces the largest amount of good. In connection to this, John Stuart Mill declared the greatest happiness principle by saying that an action is right as far as it maximizes the attainment of happiness for the greatest number of people. Okay? If actions are considered right when it maximizes utility. Another question comes to mind. Okay? If kanina we ask the question who on whose good should we maximize, the second question is what? What things are good? So to answer the question what is good, okay, what follows is a list of how groups of people view what is good in our world. And since these are groups of people, it is associated with society. Jeremy Bentham answered the question what is good by adopting hedonism. According to this view, the only thing that is good is pleasure. The mantra of hedonists is eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. These two photos depict this view taken from the movie Spirited Away, where the parents of the child turned into pigs after being greedy of the food presented in front of them. Hedonists do not deny that many kinds of things can be good, including food, friends, freedom, along with many other things. But hedonists see these as instrumental goods that are valuable only because it is a source of producing pleasure. Again, here we hear the word instrument, meaning it is a means to an end. Food, friends, freedom, among others are, are treated as goods that produce pleasure or happiness. Likewise, on the negative side, the lack of food, friends, or freedom is instrumentally bad because it produces pain, suffering, and unhappiness. On the other hand, the second group of people, the materialists, argues that having material wealth or physical possessions is the primary source of meaning of man's existence, as such this picture of a shopaholic. Now, the third group, the Stoics, espouse the idea that to generate happiness, one must learn to distance oneself and be apathetic okay, or indifferent. 
In this worldview, a person must accept that some things are not within his or her control. The sooner a person realizes this, the happier he or she can become. If you want to learn more about Stoicism and how good is derived from this worldview, you can click on the link above. Now the fourth group we call the theist associate happiness to heaven. Okay? So Philippines being a predominantly Catholic country believes that the ultimate basis of happiness is communion with God. The world where we are in right now is only just a temporary reality where we have to maneuver around while waiting for the ultimate coming of our Savior. Last but not the least are the humanists who espouses the idea that human beings are free to carve their own destiny and legislate their own laws. In this worldview, man is the captain of his own ship and master of his soul. Humanists see themselves not merely as stewards of the creation but as individuals who are in control of themselves and the world outside them. This is the worldview of most scientists. Okay, so to recap, good is associated with pleasure, physical possessions, the serenity to acknowledge things not within our control, communion with God in heaven, or the results of the rational thinking of human beings. As we can observe, there is no one size fits all. The questions what is good, what qualifies what is good, on whose good should we maximize? These questions are subjective meaning it depends on the worldview or perspective of the person being asked. This lesson gave us possible answers and direction. Whether or not we agree, these are all undertaken in the hopes of attaining the good life. We could only explore and choose our options and find what works for us. As everyone is still groping in the dark as to what really constitutes a good life, balance between ethics, meaning what is good, Okay, technology and the good life must be attained. As a summary, Plato's idealism was contradicted by Aristotle's realism, which pointed to science as a path towards achieving happiness. And in the achievement of such happiness, sometimes it involves the difficult decision and the sacrifice of a few to justify the welfare of the many. Today, Man is constantly in pursuit of the good life. Every person has his or her own perspective when it comes to what comprises the good life. At present, we see various schools of thought that all promise their own key to finding happiness. For hedonists, it is pleasure. For materialists, it is physical possessions. For theists, it is a communion with God in heaven. For stoics, it is living in agreement with nature. For humanists, it is making this world heaven on earth by concentrating their energies on improving this world. Now, in relation to our course, science and technology has been regarded at the forefront of man's attempt at finding happiness. The only question at the end of the day is whether science is taking the right path toward attaining what it really means to live a good life. Again, thank you for watching this episode. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you are not yet subscribed, and ring the notification bell so that you will be updated on our latest uploads. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.